Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. It's where we are. Worship, praise is. But I want to talk about prayer for protection and protection in prayer. Amen. What um, our brother was going through. Um, Hezekiah, amen. And so um, on today, this is a, a series on men and women's prayers in the Bible um, that have made a difference in how prayer truly is the difference maker in our lives, amen. Um, I hope each and every one of you have a prayer list, a prayer life that you go through each and every day, amen, that you can go to the Lord in prayer and have your direct communication with God. Amen. And as Amen. we go through the text today, um, as I say to you on today, um, these are very obscure prayers. Sometimes prayers that are hidden in the midst of a story or of an uh, unusual event in the Bible where we find these people crying out to God in prayer, and we see through these prayers the mighty power of God. Amen. I don't know about you, my sisters and my brothers, but I know that there is power in prayer, and then there is power in God through your prayers. Amen. Amen. It doesn't Amen. Have anything Amen. to do with you, but it has to do with the power that God blesses in your prayer. Amen. So through these people, we have seen that prayer truly does make a difference, church. These prayers are reminders to us, to you and to me, that God is still a powerful God. He is still the same God today as he was yesterday and shall be forevermore. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 Yes. When we look once again, when we look and know that God is a powerful God and he is still a God who answers prayer. And if we really want God's prayer, a power to move in your life, amen, and in our church, then we must get down on bending knees in prayer and pray to a great and awesome God. I don't know about you, but the God that we serve is an awesome God. Amen. Yes, amen can do all things but fail us. Amen. I don't know about you, my sisters and my brothers, but we have to pray that he will do great and mighty things with and in our lives as well as in the church. This morning or today, amen, early afternoon in Atlanta here, we will look at another example of prayer that made a difference. Today we take a look at King Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the king of Judah for 29 years, 1716 to 1687 B.C., which is before Christ. Amen. More speak is the devoted to Hezekiah in Scripture than to almost any other king since the time of Solomon. The parallel accounts, amen, in the book of 2 Chronicles, we also read and get a better understanding of the spiritual and political victories that the king Isaiah had gained through his faith in God. Amen. I don't amen. care what you try to do in life, amen. If you don't look to God as being the author and the finisher of your life, I stop past to tell you today, amen, that God is, not, God is able to do all things. But if you don't look to him as being the author, and the finisher of your faith, amen, and to know that God is a God that is an awesome and powerful God, we can't get God to move if we don't do the things that God would have us to say and what God would have us to do. The Bible says that of all the kings that descended from David, that Hezekiah was the greatest, amen. Even when you look in the second Kings, the 18th chapter, verses five through seven, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him amongst the kings of Judah, the tribe of Judah, where Jesus came through, nor any that were before him. 
for he stayed with the Lord and departed not from following him. He kept the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses, and the Lord was with him, and he prospered wherever he went. My sisters Amen. and my brothers, I want you to know that Amen. God is the same God today as he was yesterday. If yes. he was with Moses, he will be with you. If he was yes, with yes. Hosea, he will be with you. The Amen. Only that you have to do is do not depart from the Lord. Amen. You have to stay rooted and grounded in faith to believe that God can do all things but fail. So you must continue to stay with God, to walk with God, to talk with God, that God yes. can prosper you to have a good, successful, and prosperous life. Can the church say amen today? Amen. amen. Yes, amen. Has it, has it, has amen. Hezekiah was great in many respects. Amen. He was a great, uh, uh, I didn't know this pastor here until I started studying it out. He was a great political leader who delivered Judah from the chaos and the reign of his father Ah Ahaz, who That's right. was an mm -hmm. evil king. Amen. Uh, that Ahaz, his father, did not do to, to obey the commands of the Lord or walk in the statutes of the Lord. But, but his son, he was a great builder, and the adjunct which brought water to Jerusalem can be seen even in Jerusalem to this day, amen. And that was a source of water, amen, that came through the channels, amen, in Jerusalem that is still visible to see in the world today in Jerusalem, amen. What a great man of God that Hezekiah was is because he stayed with the Lord, amen. He walked with the Lord and he did in mighty things right with now, the Lord, amen. Amen, amen. You went on mute. Uh, okay, brother, Pastor, you went on mute, and whoever that yeah. was should put oh. yours on mute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. But most of us, but most of all of us, he was a great religious reformer. He was a mighty man of God. He had the courage to destroy the serpents. Amen. Over in the book of Numbers, which, 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 which Moses made because the people made an idol of it. Amen. And because they worshiped that, Hezekiah said, we can't have the people of God worshiping idols or worshiping things that should not be worshipped. So what he did was he got rid of it. He destroyed it. Amen. That he was a great king in the household of God. Amen. And he closed by his wicked father. He reinstituted the long neglected feast of the Passover. He destroyed the places that were pagan idols will worship a man. See, back in those days, a man, folks would worship anything. It don't make a difference what it was. They was Amen. worshiping snakes. They was worshiping things that they had no business worshiping. When you yes. worship, you ought to worship God. You ought to talk to God and pray to God and be with God that God will be with you. Amen. Yes, amen. So Preach. was a great king. So, so when you read about the life uh, um, you will realize that King Hezekiah faced four different crises. Amen. The one, the first one he faced was the crisis of choice. Early in his kingship, he chose to forsake the idols of his father. He tore down the idols and rebuilt the city of God. He faced the crisis of invasion. The Assyrians, amen, as uh, uh, the first lady read in the text, the Assyrians came right to the walls of Jerusalem and threatened to uh, to come in and to destroy the city, amen. It had been, the, for the, if it had not been for the power of prayer, it might have been conquered, amen. But because Hezekiah at that time was a man of prayer, amen, uh, he always looked to God, amen, in everything that he did. And that was the reason that he was so successful. My brothers and sisters, if we want to be successful in life today, we have to look, amen, to the hills from which come up our help and your help coming from the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. Amen. 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 You to look to God to be your help. Amen. You can't do anything on your own, amen. You can't fight a battle 
by yourself, amen. You got to put the battle in God's hands, amen. You got to let God fight your battle. And when you yes. give it to God, amen, and stand back and say that the salvation of the Lord is at hand. And Father, it's not my battle to fight. It's your battle to fight. My sisters and brothers, when is the last time that you have gave your problem, your situation, whatever you may be going through, you got to learn how to throw in the towel and say, I give up, Lord, I can't do this by myself. Preach. I wish I had somebody to pray Preach. with me on this morning. Amen. Yes. Isaiah, Amen. Bought, Isaiah bought him some good news of his impending death. And so today we see Hezekiah's face with the most personal crisis of all. He was faced with the crisis of death. Amen. And then it came the message of the prophet, amen. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Isaiah. Hezekiah had become ill and was ill to the point of death. Up to this time, he had been they had been threatening him and taking care of him. And Isaiah the prophet comes to tell him and give him some news that he did not want to hear. And had Isaiah said, This is what the Lord says. In other words, Isaiah was telling Hezekiah, you don't need no second opinion, my brother, because God said it, amen. In other words, what Isaiah was telling me was, ain't no need to want to see um, another, a, another prophet. Ain't no need to want to see anybody else because my word is coming straight from God, amen. How would you feel, amen, if the man of God came to you and told you that you was about ready to die and there was no help from you, that the disease that you had was an incurable disease, what would you do, amen? How would you handle your situation? In these times, you have nothing else to do but to trust in the name of the Lord Jehovah, amen. Amen. And Isaiah was coming to him, and Hezekiah had nothing else to do because it was coming from God. It was the harshness of the announcement. Isaiah was giving him a message that had no hope, no comfort. There seemed to be no way out because this was God's will. Amen. Then the second part of the message comes. He says, set your house in order, my brother, because you are going to die. You will yes. not recover. In other words, you're going to die, so you got to get your, get everything ready. Take care of everything because you need to take care of. So Isaiah told him to set his house in order. It really meant to pick out a man that could yes. take over the kingdom. Amen. Uh, um, why? You're about ready to die because there's no healing for it, and somebody else has to take over the throne, amen. And, and so he kept on speaking to Hezekiah. And the Bible declares that Hezekiah really didn't know what to do or what to say, amen. But the Bible the declared that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, amen. And then what Hezekiah did was he went on and started praying to an almighty God, amen. We did. The last time that you have turned to the Lord, amen, and asked God to be able to help you in your situation. And then Hezekiah went on and started praying and asking God. He said, Lord, I've been a good king. I have walked up right in your ways, amen. I have did everything that you have done, amen. And he turned his face again and prayed. Some commentaries believe that he was turning to the temple to making a statement that if he could have gotten up out the bed, he would have made his way to the temple for the prayer, amen. But what? guess what? He couldn't even get out the bed. So to get along with God, he did the next best thing, which was to turn towards the wall and away from the people who were in the room so they would not get in the mix of his communication with God. How many of you know that when you're praying to God, you got to get everybody else out the way, amen. You got to be with God alone. If you want God to hear your prayers, you need to have 
a prayer life and somewhere you can go and be by yourself and be Thanks. with God. Amen. A lot of times we ain't got time to have and pray to God because uh, the telephone is always ringing. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The phone Preach is the ringing. Word. Somebody knocking on your door, somebody calling you and getting in the mix of your stuff or what you're trying to get done with the Lord. But I stop past to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you don't have a relationship and a prayer life with God, I want you to know that God, amen, sometimes God can hear you all the time. But when you let another stuff get in the way of God, then your prayer line is a little bit off then. Amen. You can't let Speak nobody get in your prayer Say life it. with God. Say because it. that's the only communication that you have with the Lord is to get down on bending knees and pray to God and ask God to help you. Amen. But let's take a look at his prayer in verse number three. The motive behind Hezekiah's prayer was that he wanted to live. Hezekiah didn't want to die. None of us really want to die, but we all want to go to heaven. Somebody talk to me up in this house. Amen. Mm -hmm. We all, all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. In order for you to get to heaven, you don't have to die one day. Amen. There is an appointed time for you to leave here and for me to leave here. So we must understand that God is our ultimate Source that no matter what, God mm. is going to look out for you and take care of you. Amen. There are a Amen. number of reasons that Hezekiah might have wanted to live so badly. His family, he had not a son to inherit the throne, his riches. It might have been because he was only 39 years old. That's a young age, man, for somebody to come and tell you that the Lord say you didn't ready to die. But Hezekiah didn't use any of his reasons. For none of those speculations. Instead, Hezekiah said, Lord, I'm too good to die. I like that. I like that, Pastor. He said, I'm too good to die. He said, I walk in truth, and I have done what is good in your sight. Some say this was because he did not have an assurance of eternal life, and I don't believe that right there. I don't believe it at all, amen, because by reading about his life and the things he did, he was a born-again believer, amen. So whatever the reason his prayer was answered, and he lived to bear a son who would become the most evil ruler in Judah's history, which leads to a little debate here. Amen. I'm talking to my Bible students now who have debated for years whether Hezekiah should have prayed for healing or whether his recovery was God's perfect will or his permissive will. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to stop right there and work with that right there. Was it God's perfect will? Or get was out. It his permissive mm -hmm. will. Sometimes God does not answer prayer when the answer is not the best thing for you. Oh, come on. Somebody need to talk to me up in here. Amen. Those who feel Hezekiah was wrong point out that the king's final 15 years involved his sinful alliance with the Babylonians and also the birth of Manasseh who turned out to be Judah's most wicked king, which was his son. Had Hezekiah died, Judah would have been spared the Babylonian compromise and the evil reign of his son. However, Manasseh did repent and serve the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that no matter what you have done, no matter how bad it might have been, because ain't none of us perfect, amen, all of us are going to make mistakes here and there along in the lives that we live. And so amen. Manasseh, amen, was an evil king. He did some horrible things. But one thing I got to give him credit for was is he remembered that the Lord was a forgiving God, amen. How many of you can say in the house of God today and you know that God is a forgiving God and a forgetting God? He said he will cast your sins to the bottom of the sea and he won't remember them no more. Manasseh, Preach. amen, repented and asked God to forgive him of his sins, amen. I don't care how bad it may have been, God is a righteous God. God is a merciful and gracious God. He gives us unmerited favor. And Manasseh's life was saved, amen. And he started walking in the ways of the Lord, amen. I don't care how bad somebody has been. Hey, if they get saved after they've been messed up, 
See, a lot of times when we find folks who have been messed up in the streets for a long time in life, amen, and then come to God, we always want to put some type of critique on them and talk about, oh, you remember when he was over there, amen? You remember when he went to jail? Or you remember when he was on crack? Or you remember when he was doing this or doing that? My brothers and my sisters, it don't make no difference what you have done in life. That's the reason Jesus died on Golgotha Hill, the place of the skull, that your life could be forgiven for no matter what you have done. God has the assurance of eternal life for you and for me. And that's why we can ask God for forgiveness. Amen. Because amen. Amen. God, amen. I pray that y'all would walk with me here and pray with me as I'm about ready to take my clothes. Amen. On the other hand, there's other points that Hezekiah had no heir to the throne. When Isaiah gave the message of doom so that his prayer was not for himself alone, but also for the nation, amen. Set your house in order, Hezekiah, literally means pick out a man to succeed you from the throne. God had promised that Judah would always have a descendant of David on the throne. And Hezekiah was holding God to his promise. My brothers and my sisters, the word says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, God yes. says, do ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You yes, have amen. to have the word of God on the in down, on the inside of you, amen, that it can come out of you to speak to God by his words, amen. See, that's uh -huh. the reason our prayers are not being answered is because we talk to God in ways that God is not understanding. God understands his word. Somebody uh, God understands his word, amen. His word. So yes. if we talk to God by his word, then God has to answer by his word, amen. Yes, so yes. God, amen. You abide in me and my words abide in down on the inside of you. God say, I can work with you. So he's yes. working right now with Hezekiah. He promised yes. that Judah would always have a descendant of David on the throne. And Hezekiah was holding God to his promise. All of his sons were born in the closing 15 years. Amen. It was true that Manasseh, Manasseh was a godless king, which is not Isaiah's honor as a father. But then we must admit that his great-grandson, Josiah, was a great man of God. That was his great. That was his grandson. Had had Hezekiah died, that it would have been no Josiah. Therefore, we have indications in the Bible that during Hezekiah's last fifteen years of his rule, he was busy with the men of Hezekiah. I want you to know today, Amen, that because God gave this man. 15 more years to live, it was a great thing because Hezekiah was able to put his house in order then. Amen. Come on, church. We got to be able Amen. to put our house in order and do the things that God would have us to do. Amen. It's yes. Why did God allow David to live? Watch this here. All of David's sons were with him. We're talking about sons right now. Manasseh, Hezekiah's son, was evil. David's sons was wicked, even including Solomon. Why did God allow David to live? God does slay a man because of the future sin of a child not yet conceived. Therefore, the healing of the king and of deliverance of Jerusalem occurred at the same time. Would have been to the glory of God, to the rescue of the city, and then to the heir of another king. Amen. I stop past to tell you also in my close here is that we must understand, church, is that the prayer of, of the godly king was answered immediately. Isaiah had not gone out of the midst of the city. When the word of the Lord came to him, told him to return to the king and tell him that the Lord would cure him in three days. What does that three days remind me of when I talk, read about it? It reminded me that Jesus the Christ was bound in the grave for three days and for three nights. Amen. And God is a God that always works things out in his own time. Yes. You can't work it out for God. God has to work it out for you, my brother and my sister. Amen. You Amen. That even in 
the power of the Assyrians, he even defended Jerusalem, amen, and Hezekiah in his plea on his past goodness, God based his answer on Hezekiah's prayers and tears. Church, sometimes we just got to cry out to the Lord and just yes. ask God, Lord, please bless me, amen. Help me in my situation. Sometimes we go through things that we're not able or capable, capable of doing nothing about it. But we must trust in an all and mighty God to be able to deliver us from whatever we're going through. Yes. Let's look at the miracle that God did for Hezekiah. First lady, you read the phase prepare for a, a putulence of figs, means a lump of figs. And so Isaiah ordered a lump of figs to be laid upon the boil that Hezekiah recovered. He applied a well-known and useful remedy to the severity affected boil. I don't know if you all knew it, my sisters and my brothers, but there was a boil that was on Hezekiah's leg, amen. And it was one of those boils, amen, that could be in today's life is something almost called like AIDS or something like that in today's life. It could be something that, that's incurable on today, amen. And we know this uncurable, amen, is we know they say AIDS is supposed to be uncurable. But let me tell you something. Ain't nothing too small or too big for God that he can't handle. Amen. The things we must understand is that the healing power did not come from the lump of pig, but rather a miracle and healing of Hezekiah was the work of God. Amen. I wish I had somebody to pray with me. It was the work of God that healed that man. It was the power of God that healed that man. And with the healing came right. the assurance that even God was with Moses, he was going to be with Hezekiah. If God was with Moses, he's going to be with you. If he yes. was with Hezekiah, he's going to be with you. Amen. I want you to know, my sisters and my brothers, that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Amen. Mm. It with death often has a greater understanding of life. Amen. You, mm -hmm. you start understanding the life when somebody tell you you got ready to yeah. die. All right. You got ready to die. Say I bet it. your life will change for you real good then. <laughs> then you have to realize how precious life is and how quickly it can be taken away from you. Yes. God yes. Hezekiah 15 more years. God changed his mind. Don't tell me that God can't change his mind. God will do whatever he want to do when he want to do it and Amen. how he want to do it. Because he is God. Amen. That's right. I know you're right. Amen. Because he's God. And God can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Why? And I believe the reason why God changed his mind is the same reason God does anything for his glory. Amen. And glory alone. Mm -hmm. so yes. now we should realize that nothing is too hard. Too big or impossible. Nothing. Nothing. The Bible says in Matthew one thirty seven that all things are possible oh, for God. Dang. For those question who is, believe. do we believe? That's the question. Do you believe that God can do all things? Can you believe that God is the same God today as He was yesterday and shall be forevermore? We must remember that God is Elohim, which means that He is the Almighty God. He is Yahweh, which means He is the one that was, who is, and will be, and the one to come. God, all things oh, are say possible it. To say God. It. When we pray, God sees our hearts. He yes. hears our prayers, and he acts accordingly unto his will. Not your will, but let God's will be done. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that God spared Hezekiah's life. Why did he give me 15 more years to live? To me, the answer is easy. Amen. Point blank and simple. God was not done with Hezekiah yet. Amen. That's right. He still had a work yet 
for Hezekiah to do. Amen. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, God is not finished with you yet. Amen. Say it. Mm -hmm. He still has a work for you to do. Amen. Yes. So I yeah. want you to understand, don't give up on God, church. Always remember that God is a good God and yes. always is a good God. Yes. And God can do all things but fail. Oh, and in this entire situation, God is a God, amen, that no matter what anybody else says, God will uphold you. God will hold you. He will keep you. He will mold you. And God will make you. And in Hezekiah's case, uh, it was God, a man that changed his yes. mind and healed Hezekiah. He yes. carried him on. He blessed him on his way. Yes. And I stop fast to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, uh, God is not finished with the church yet. Amen. amen. This church still has a long way to go. Amen. Yes. God is with you, Pastor. Yes. And God is Praise with God. the church. So what we have to do is, is put our trust and believe in God. Is it anybody here that believe that God can do all things? All There's things. nothing too big that God cannot do. I'm a firm believer that if you throw it in the hands of the Lord, that God will make a way when it seems like there is no way. How yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. A door maker, amen. When it seems like there is no dough, God will make a dough. So oh, my yeah. brothers and sisters, always remember that Preach. the God we serve is the great God of all men. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and yes. Jacob. Yes. He is the father yes. of Jesus the Christ, the one Preach. who died the one who bled and the one who got up with all power in his hand. Yes. It was Jesus, amen. Yes. amen. Up. My brothers and sisters, you can get up. Well, if Hezekiah got up, I can amen. get up. Amen. If I say I gave a word, you can give a word, amen. If amen. God changes yes. mind, don't be mad at God. Don't blame nothing on God. Just know that God is God all by himself. Amen. The Lord amen. Kind heart. Lean not to your own understanding, okay. but it is in all, all your ways, your ways. yes, direct your path. I, I don't know, know you're about right, you, but I believe that God can do all things. All I things. That God is a God, amen. He's Yahweh, He's your Elohim, He's the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the owner cattle upon a thousand hills. Is that the same God you serve that I yeah. serve? I know what kind of God I serve. Well. He's God. He's a God, amen, that looks past your faults and sees all of your needs. Well, Are you ready for God to continue to bless you because God is not finished with you? Amen. 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 has amen. a work for you to do. Yes, amen. sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Remember, if he gave Hezekiah 15 years, he can give you another 30 years. Well, amen. amen. No matter what your situation is, amen. no matter how bad your situation might be, just remember, my brothers and sisters, that God is a righteous God. Amen. God is an awesome God. Yes. God is a loving God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So much that he gave his only begotten son. That who should ever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Amen. 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 So, Amen. Amen. Lies in the hands of God. Amen. For everything Amen. you do, you make sure you praise and you thank God for all that he has done for you. Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're protected Amen. by your prayers. Yes. Amen. Always Amen. remember, be careful or to be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. To God. Amen. May, the, may the Lord continue to bless you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in the day of the Lord. Somebody Amen. wasn't able to praise God today. But church, we're here. And we're able to praise him and thank him for all 
that he has done for us. And he got more blessings for you. So you might as well just get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Because mm -hmm. God getting ready to bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Awful word. Thank Amen. you, Pastor. Yeah, great uh, word. Thank Amen. you, Thank uh, you uh, my uh, brother. Uh, Amen. Powerful word. Uh, uh. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. It's where we honor, worship, praise His name. It's where we honor, worship. His name. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. It's where we honor, worship, praise His name. It's where we honor, worship, praise His name. Name.